boat electronics. There's a lot of electronics that helps us with the navigation of our vessels. I'm going to go through a few of these uh, electronics and aids that we have on board. So the typical bridge of a larger motorboat um, going from left to right. We've got a video, so there'll be cameras around the boat on boats I've worked on. We have cameras of the deck to see uh, the crew doing the deck work, the engine room, so you can see what's going on in the engine room, uh, chart plotter. If you have a boat with this amount, you need to spend some time familiarizing yourself. Um, there's a lot of information and technology there, which is so useful. In a smaller boat, we've got less room for the... Uh, the amount of electronics we had on the previous one so we'll just have the essentials on a yacht and we'll go through these so on a smaller motor yacht here we have a vhf radio um, the readouts for the engine and a typical plotter with the radar so this is the uh, where we pick up the information uh, going from right to left vhf very high frequency radio antenna um, then we've got the inmarsat domes we've got the radar scanner gps receiver uh, wind indicator and wind speed uh, reader and the active CME uh, radar reflector. In Marsat, in Marsat's private company um, that you can use data from 70 degrees north to 70 degrees south depending on the in Marsat here in Marsat B we can communicate by voice. Uh, with in Marsat C which is common with um, yachts and smaller boats we can communicate by text and also pick up essential information such as safety and weather. GMDSS, Global Maritime Distress and Safety System. We've talked about this before. It is a means, an electronic means, but if we get into trouble, um, we can get help. This is divided up into areas A1, A2, A3 and A4. So C area A1 will be the radio telephone coverage of VHF co stations in which continuous alerting DSC calls are available. C area 2, uh, radio telephone coverage, MF coast stations, which continuous alerting digital selection calls are available. A3 are the coverage of the Inmarsat geostationary. That means that they move um, at the same speed as the Earth. So to us, they look stationary and they go from 70 degrees north to 70 degrees south. So these are the GMDSS areas. So GMDSS, Integrated Global Safety System, which helps us if it all goes wrong. It includes the DSC Radio, Navtex, EPIRB and SART. I'll explain these. DSC Radio, we've done a whole tutorial on DSC Radio. Um, it's a way of getting help um, by distress alert on the sets we have. If we press the red button once, let go, press it again, hold it for at least five seconds, we can send out a distress alert to all vessels in our area and we can do the handheld or the ship set we've just talked about the gmds areas so the vhf operates line of sight in gmds area a1 navtex it's a means of getting information and safety information um, it works on long wave so it's distance that we can uh, receive information is about 500 miles very cost effective way of getting forecasts and safety information EPIRB, Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacon. This is a worldwide um, distress alert. If we buy one, we get it, we register it, put the information in the boat, and we get a unique code from it. If we're in distress, we manually um, set it off, or we can get one that's automatic. So when it goes in the water, it sets off automatically, or one with a magnetic switch on. So when it leaves its housing, it goes on mag um, automatically. It sends a distress message on 406 megahertz that's picked up by the satellites either the russian copas sarsat satellites or the inmarsat satellites that is then downloaded to the local user terminal it then goes to the coast guard and the rescue coordination center and they effect a rescue either effecting a rescue themselves or messaging through the satellite ships in the area to come and rescue you it is it is a game changer. Um, people are alive today that wouldn't have been alive if it hadn't been from the EPIRB. So we can let people know that we're in trouble very quickly by using an EPIRB. SART, Search and Rescue Radar Transponder. The SART detects radar beams from another vessel. When it detects those radar beams, it transmits back. So if we look at the radar screen there, we can see the 12 dots. 
and on that radar screen um, 12 delta shows that somebody's activated their SART somewhere along that line so if we take our vessel down the direction of those 12 dots they will get bigger and bigger and bigger and once we're in the vicinity there'll be 12 concentric circles um, disadvantage is it's not worldwide and it's only distance for about 10 miles from boat to boat and 50 miles from SART to helicopter we rarely see them on leisure vessels however more leisure vessels will have radar so we need to know it so if we see the dots on our radar screen that someone's activated this SART and possibly in distress personal safety equipment so we can get personal location beacon um, via radio and there's some commercial ones on the uh, on the market so if somebody falls in um, they'll alert and they'll come up on the plotter uh, PLB personal location be beacon via satellite um, it broadcasts your GPS position to the national and international search and rescue bodies via satellite on 406 in the same way that the EPIRG works once activated we continuously transmit for at least 24 hours and we can get these that fit inside our life jacket so if we do fall over the side we can activate it and we know our distress will go to the uh, the rescue authorities via satellites on the 406 megahertz boat logs these measure the speed through the water and distance traveled through the water originally there were lines just like this on the left you put it in the water and there'd be knots tied to it and as they ran past um, you'd time it with a uh, a sand timer stop count the knots and that's where the word knots for boat speed comes from uh, we've come a long way since then uh, the next development was towing a training log with the propeller it was either mechanical or electrical so the mechanical one would go around didn't need batch maintenance or batteries um, an electrical one accurate and calibrated um, use both of them both pretty good what you'll have now on most boats will be a paddle wheel and that will sit in the bottom of the boat so when you uh, go to the boat you need to take the blank out put the paddle wheel in before you put it in make sure the paddle wheel turns give it a blow see if it turns and then take it back when you finish your um, sailing or motor boating you have to take it out put a blank in and that stops the weed building up on the paddle wheel and the paddle wheel um, under reading so that will, the log out, log readout will be either on a dial or on a uh, display and it will show you how far you've gone and the speed you're going so if the distance to the land is five miles a log that over reads will show five miles before you reach it a log that under reads will hit land before the log shows five miles so an over reading log is safer than an under reading log weather instruments so weather instruments um, we have a wind speed and a direction and then that would be repeated down on the deck showing the wind speed and direction and they'll be able to calibrate um, in knots for wind speed or Beaufort scale more commonly in knots and the direction of the wind also it'll be able to work out it's integrated with your boat speed um, it will work out your true wind speed and direction or your apparent wind speed and direction which is factored in your direction and speed of the boat electronic or flux gate compass this has no moving parts uses electronics to sense the magnetic field can interface with other electronics and comp compensate for deviation so this is quite common to have this and integrating with your other instruments in the boat echo sounder measures the depth of the boat so it measures it works by measuring the time difference between transmitted and reflected signals and converting them to a depth reading in the past we used to use a lead line so which is a piece of lead with a hole in the minute in the bottom and in that hole we used to put tallow and when the line was pulled up it gave a sample of the seabed and if you look at your chart it will tell you the nature of the seabed so in the past people had the advantage of matching up the nature of the seabed with what it says on the chart um, now we've moved on to echo sounders and it's called the left it goes on the bottom of the boat it's called a transducer and it measures the depth we can get forward looking sonars these are really useful if you're working in coral areas or steep shelving areas it will tell you where the danger is before you get to the danger and you can get ones that map out 3d of the seabed 
and that will uh, these are the instruments and you can choose on your instruments here are Raymar, Raymarine ST60 which I've had and really enjoyed in the past and you can put any of the information on any of the screens that you want so here we've got depth um, we've got in the middle wind direction and wind speed and you can flick with the buttons there to go from true to apparent and on the right you've got boat speed in knots and here we've got combining the echo sounder and the log which is quite common and you can put on there the batteries um, the voltage of batteries and discharge of your batteries and the percentage of batteries you can put them all on the same screen gas and smoke alarms um, essential to have smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms and gas monitors so we've got a gas cooker down um, on the vessel and it's essential that the batteries are left into in the uh, smoke detectors not taken out if your smoke detector keeps going on um, it's usually because it's too close to the galley and the kettle um, move it slightly out so it only goes off as an emergency not every time you make a cup of tea gps global positioning system so gps works by um, constellation of satellites um, we measure from a gps unit the distance between you and the satellite and it is pretty accurate it can measure that every second and it can track up to six satellites at once it's just like a position fix if the satellites are about six degrees apart we will get a good position if the satellites are too close together we'll get an unreliable position and the alarm will show on the uh, gps unit so the display could look like this um, handheld we can have handheld gps's um, we could display it on a chart plotter i'll be talking about chart plotters radar we do a whole course on radar so i'm just going to skim through the basics of radar for you um, here is a radar screen through the radar screen um, here we have a radar on the left um, the radar on the right the radar and the chart plotter integrated so a radar work radar works by firing um, energy out most of that energy just disappears a tiny proportion of that energy comes back and it's recorded by the set and we can display it on the screen and that happens very quickly and as a scanner goes round, it will build up a picture of objects reflecting back to us so we can see that on the screen with the radar it takes a little bit of time to work out um, how the radar set works how it works in your area what the screen looks like in your area so if you do have a radar i suggest that you use it during clear sunny days um, under the rules of the road which we covered um, if we have a radar it's part of our lookout system we must use it here we have a radar and on the left hand side is the radar screen on the right hand side is the radar image in purple and it's overlaid with the chart plotter beam width the narrower the beam width the better the definition of the picture and we'll cover that in the radar course wave clutter the radar beams hit the top of the waves and they come back so if it's windy and wavy you'll get a reflection back on the waves and it'll obscure the screen we do have a filter that can cut that out but we've got to be careful it doesn't cut out small objects there ais automatic identification system this works on vhf signal it's relatively recent and we transmit from our vessel and vessels transmit um, <clears throat> information to other vessels information includes the vessel's identification whether or not it's underway and if so where to so here we have a a basic um, ais system we've got us in the middle target vessels and details of the target so it'd be range 14 miles mmsi number which is the mobile number uh, for the vhf and their latitude longitude they're underway and it will give you their speed over the ground and their course over the ground if they're coming towards you it will tell you how close it will get to you and the time that it will get to you so under the automatic identification system ais for the chosen vessel it will give you the distance mmsi number position if the vessel is underway or stopped speed over the ground and course over the ground and here's a chart plotter with um, vessels on the ais electronic chart plotters we can either have these built into the boat like these two units here or 
we can have a software system such as Navionics, which we can have on a tablet form or our um, mobile phone form, depending on the boat we have. If we've got one of these, like it says Raymarine here, um, on some of these we'll have a transmitter and we can log into um, these plotters and get a repeat on the plotters on our tablets. So we can have the chart plotter radar screen on our tablet as we move around the boat. Um, we can get them handheld um, and we can have them on mobile phones. It's a little bit harder to see. So chart plotters navigation software. There's quite a lot out here. So here's the C Pro version. We can do our passage plan and on it will give the tides and it can work out at certain speeds with the tides at that time um, a course to steer. Autopilot. Autopilot is the uh, the steering um, of the vessel is done automatically and it's set to the um, flux gate compass. It will go in the direction you ask it to go in. So if the wind changes, it won't change. It does have a good facility for um, changing by 10 degrees or 1 degree and it also has a good facility for tacking. So you can press the tack button and it will tack the vessel for you to the correct course which you've preset depending on your boat. So integrating the electronics. So we have all the systems can be integrated together. So the GPS, the depth, the speed, the autopilot, the chart plotter, the wind speed, and you can integrate it all together. So all the information comes up on your chart plotter. So here we have a chart plotter um, with radar, depth, um, <clears throat> and your chart plotter on the top left. You can choose, you can drag and drop, you can choose whatever suits you, which is best um, that you're happy with. I want to show you this great facility which is the Navionics web app and the facilities it has. Um, just log on to it, go on to a search engine and put Navionics web app and you'll get to uh, this page. It is a vector chart so we can zoom in, either use the plus or just double click. And I want to zoom in and talk a little bit about um, Yarmouth on the Isle of Wight. And you'll notice as we zoom in, um, being a vector chart, it's like peeling back the layers of an onion, you'll get more and more detail um, on that chart. So we can, uh, if we want to have a look at an area, we can go to the magnifying glass on the top left, click on that, and that will give us information with the masters, our marinas, moorings, fuel, restaurants, bars, shops, taxi, repairs, tides, currents, uh, boat dealers, um, and lakes. If we just click on the tides here, it will give us real time of what's happening with the tides. So here we go, around the Isle of Wight, this is what's happening now. So it's pretty much towards the end of the uh, the range. The arrow here saying the tide's going up. So here's one meter in Bewley going up. Uh, mouth of Bewley River, one meter going up. Cows, 1.2. Yarmouth, 1.4 going up. So we can see a snapshot of now of what's happening on. It won't give us in the future because it's the free app. So that's the tidal height of now. And we can look at tidal currents. And we've looked at the other tutorials about tidal stream atlases. So just a click of the button, it will give us what the tide is doing now. So we can say that the tide is going um, east off cows at 2.1 knots. So the tide is coming in or flooding down the Solent um, and out here and we can see that as a snapshot right now for the tides happening. If we want to predict what's going into the future we'd have to buy the app, download it and we can interrogate any of these tides, slide along the bottom and it'll tell us what the tides are doing going on. So that's the um, magnifying glass on the top left. Um, on the bottom left we click on there it says Navionics and Sonar Chart. So if you want to have a look at something that's a little bit more tricky or you're fishing and you want to find a ledge or a hole, click on that and if we zoom in it will enable it and you'll see that the detail here is so much better. So clicking on and we can see the whole round Hurst as it um, scours through here and it gives us massive details of the contours and what's going on and the depth. So no wonder the water bubbles around here as the tide goes in and out of, of the Solent. And here we are, more depth. Um, the darker the lines, 
the steeper the contour. So there's a really steep contour here, um, just off Yarmouth. But I wanted to have a look at um, I wanted to have a look at uh, Newtown Creek, um, and I wanted to show how we use this for our passage planning. So if we look at this, this is giving us chart datum, and it shows that chart datum there's not a lot of water in Newtown Creek. If we wanted to see something, what we do is we just click, we get the cross, we get the question mark, interrogate the question mark, and it will tell you what it is. In this instance, it's a West Cardinal Boy. I'll click on that, and it will go um, yellow, black, yellow, quick nine, West um, Cardinal Boy. If we go to menu, our save tracks will be under tracks, um, and that will only be available to the uh, the paid um, the paid apps. Routes that we put on here will be saved. So there's routes I've done in the past. I've got a tutorial about um, routing. Um, markers with a paid one, you can um, put markers on points of interest. So if you're doing your planning and your passage planning and where you want to go on your, your trip, you can pop your markers on um, and then you can go back to it in a future time. Um, with the paid one, we can put on weather and tides and that will overlay. And I'll talk about that when I go through my paid one. Map options, and this is absolutely brilliant. No overlay is um, what we got here, like a standard chart. Um, we could go for a satellite overlay. It uses Bing for this. So if we go like this, it will give us satellite of what is on the land, which is great for going ashore. Or terrain, which is a bit more like a um, Alton survey map, and it tells you what's happening ashore. Or if you want to go back to no overlay. So with passage planning, you want to get all the information you can from all resources. So I use Navionics web app, which is great as long as you've got a signal. I also use Google Maps, surprisingly enough. Um, so I can zoom in and have a look. Not a huge amount of information, but I can go to satellite image and it will give us um, Newtown Creek here. And this uses Google, whereas Navionics Web App uses Bing. Um, and I can have a look at this. Quite a lot of the time with Google, it will give you low tide, which is really handy because you can zoom in at low tide and have a look at it. And it's the same if you go to Google Earth pretty much the same but with Google Earth we can go 2D which is looking straight down or 3D looking in so we can we can come out of here and look at the entrance and again because it's the same Google um, information we're looking into the entrance here um, at low tide so looking in it's quite handy to do that or look straight down on it. So I just want to show that the usefulness of using this Navionics and Google Maps to see if we were going to Newtown Creek where we can land. So we can see that it's quite steep here, beach either side. But you can also see there's a sand spit here. So when we're coming into this river, we want to be coming straight in along the channel we can't come along the coast because there's spits here coming in and if we wanted to go to um, there's a really nice pub at the head of the river up here and the landing place is on the hard here so we can use Google Earth we can zoom in and have a look and we can have a look at we can have a look at where we're likely to uh, we put the dinghy and look at the hard in here and this is giving us at low tide if we go to the navionics and zoom in same place and we can see with the navionics this is the same place here but with the traditional chart or no overlay not a huge amount of information it just says slipway if we go to satellite, it will give us more information and we'll have a better idea. 
if you want to know whether there's a road we can get out of here we can put on the map and it shows the road we can get out of that so if we do this and um, tie it up with Google Earth we can then have a look with Google Earth and if we drop the person on we can actually see and this photo was taken at high tide so we can actually look at the place we're going to go we can see the slipway at high tide we can see the yard and we can see the facilities so if we had a rubber dinghy here we could actually pull the boat up um, and leave it there while we go out we've got to make sure that the uh, the tides are correct um, to get back out again so this is showing you the Navionics web app free facility this is showing you Google Earth Google Maps and using these fantastic facilities um, to do your passage planning and also more importantly choosing where you would like to go when you go on holiday or you go go sailing or motorboating you actually see beforehand and see the facilities beforehand um, it's a great thing so thank you very much for watching